How's it going, everybody? Welcome again to this fine Monday. Let's see if this is going. It is. All right. Here we go. Let me open my chat. Got to get all the things going. Sorry, it's having me log in again to the chat. All right, here we go. How are you guys doing today? Filing in. I just wanted to share this over on my Facebook stream. Okay. Hey, there you guys are. Okay. I was like, is this thing working? <laughs> oh, whoa. It's showing my background screen and not my... Hmm. Oh, can you guys see the cow? Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah, the cow's back. I, I was wanting to finish. So this stream, I was going to take a couple of my characters I had started previously and finish them up, hopefully. <laughs> and this is one of those I wanted to just do do some little extra bits on and and get the uh, get them finished up here. So I hope that's okay with you. Sounds good. I just wanna want to get some finished characters. Let me share. Okay, there's that. Yeah, I'd like to, yeah, just some, we'll see how many I can get done. <laughs> Thanks, Neil. All right, and then I'm going to share it one more time to my group. Okay, there we go. Just to make sure we're going on all the platforms. We're actually uh, streaming on Mixer today. That's a, This is the... Uh, adding a fourth platform. So welcome to anybody watching over on Mixer. I don't know if that's working or not, but it says Freestream is telling me that it is. So, hey, let's do it. <laughs> Something nice, Shadow. How's it going? All right. So let's pull up this. Uh, let's pull up the. Let's see. Reference. Mitch Cow. Good thing I named these because my PNG d uh, preview isn't working anymore. I don't know why. Okay, so let's turn up the opacity on this guy. So we have a tag, we have a bell, just some just some things, and I wanted to kind of push push him into his pose a little bit. Um, you know, just to get him out of that out of that T pose and get him pushed closer to the concept is all. <laughs> Thanks, Night Shadow. I <laughs> appreciate it. Um, any plans to do a mixer stream with the three of you again? Yes, but we're all busy for the month of December because of the holidays. But um, yeah, we're planning on on doing that. Eventually, we want to do it again because that was a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. And um, just before the stream, I was trying to get my crazy. I bought a Go XLR, which is like this crazy audio piece of equipment that separates out like your chat channel, your music channel, and all that, oh, those kind of things. And uh, that's what was preventing me from allowing the others to let me stream their voices through the through Twitch. So um, I think I got that figured out now. <laughs> okay, so let's see what this guy is missing. He's missing his ear being colored. So let's do that. Uh, make sure I have the right color. And I better turn off spotlight projection. How, how does the sound sound today, everybody? Just curious. Because I messed with some of the mic settings. Hopefully it sounds better. Okay.
I sound like Howard Stern. <laughs> is that a good or a bad thing? Yeah, I, I think this is actually the microphones Howard Stern uses. This is a really popular mic for um, like musicians and stuff like that. I, I decided to kind of go invest in a better mic. Thanks, guys. Okay, cool. I, I want to I want to um, have this tail like this, but not that crazy. Hey, Matthew, uh, can you see my PC info? Um, so basically what this is is a Reason 1700 with 64 megs of RAM and I, I kind of have overkill as far as my my GPU, my video cards. I have two 1080s, but that's not necessary. Not even all. Not not at all. <laughs> so that's kind of what I have. Hopefully that helps. Now this. There has been some helicopters flying over my house today, so I apologize if there's going to be... Um, It's stylized. It's it's part of the design. <laughs> it can't be that straight in real life. But hey, this isn't real. This is a cartoon. Hey, hey. Welcome to the stream, everybody. Whoops. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a... There, there is an... An airport, well, it's called Airport 2. It's like a, a small airport, and they have a lot of helicopters kind of parked there. And they're military. I think they're Hueys, but there's a bunch of them parked, and they do, they'll fly over like four at a time, and it's super loud. <laughs> okay. Just doing their training or whatever they're doing. Let's see here. Okay, I kind of want to uh, shrink down these horns a little bit. Make sure I have them selected. And then give them a bigger kind of uh, kink in them. So they connect with the head better. And hello everybody, welcome to the stream, by the way. On this wonderful Monday, after, uh, bef I guess it's almost noon. It's, it's noon for me. I was going to say afternoon, but it's barely afternoon, <laughs> technically. Okay. Let me solo these. You going to fix his dots to make them more asymmetrical? Um, I don't know. I'm I'm only going to be seeing him from this one angle, so um, I might. We'll see. <laughs> 8 a.m. tomorrow. You're in the future. <laughs> um, night shot. I've seen it. I haven't used it. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay. Mm hmm. I'm missing. I don't know what happened to my pen holder. It went flying the other day, and I don't. I don't know what happened to it. This is a 27-inch Cintiq. And greetings from Germany. Hello, welcome. <laughs> Forset catching me live. Awesome. Well, welcome. Okay, now this collar. I really need. I wanted to squish his head into his collar and then, so I make it look more like this. There's a little too much distance between here. <laughs> yeah, my moldy Yoda. <laughs> I, love, I love how somebody call it moldy Yoda. Okay. Uh, bu -bu -bum. Saving this. Okay, before I'm gonna, because I want to go to 
T pose mesh. I'm going to move this whole thing around. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Mm, goodness. Yeah, Doug, I'll, I'll get there. That's kind of what this session is all about is tweaking, tweaking a bunch of stuff and making them look better. Oh, awesome, Neil. Cool. Hopefully it helps. Okay. Let's reset this. Okay. And then turn on symmetry. I should have turned on symmetry to edit that thing, actually. Have you had a problem using IMM brushes in ZBrush 2020? I tried using IMM Curve Brush and my software crashed every time. Uh, no. Um, I haven't really. Um, I, I've been using 2020 for a while and I haven't had that problem. Sorry about that. Just to kind of curve up. Okay. Invert the mask and push it back into space. I don't want to squish his head. So it just kind of pushed and jammed right into his collar. <laughs> Tried on what to watch on YouTube. Did you turn up the resolution? It should be a 1080 resolution. Hey, what's up, guy? Shrink that too much. Oh, you can see, you like that? I guess I can move the microphone a little bit. There you go. That's better. <laughs> yeah, I kind of wanted to get an over the shoulder shot. Like from here. Ooh. <laughs> so you can see it's actually me doing it. As you can see my Cintiq. I thought it'd be kind of fun. Okay. Liking that now. Um, I can shrink down these, these feet while I have it here. Let's see, focal symmetry every time. I actually want to scale it from the bottom of the hoof so it doesn't change how high it is off the surface. And then we can smooth this down a little too strong. Let's see. Okay, cool. Yeah, it should be, like I said, it should be, I broadcast in 1080, so it should be 1080. Now I want to get this, little, see this little hook in the back of that foot? I kind of missed putting that in when I built this before. And I want to get that in there and get this leg straighter back here, straight, and then kind of have it go to that, that foot knuckle, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. And then bring this down. There you go. Is that a thing? Foot knuckle?
Hello from Baja, California. How's it going? <laughs> welcome, welcome. Okay, I think we've got this. Let me shrink. I want to shrink this hoof too. What's behind my screen? You're talking about my my pen holder? I don't know where it is. <laughs> It flew the other day, and I just haven't picked it back up. Little tiny hoofs. The hoof is behind my screen? Oh, geez. I'm sorry. You know, <laughs> so I had, I had, a, uh, I had a, a profile that I would open up that would, that would tell me where where my video was when I was sculpting so I didn't accidentally put it over on that side and since 2020 came out I, I haven't um, ported that little that profile over so thanks for letting me know sorry I'll try and keep it over here so you guys can see it <laughs> gotcha 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 okay so I think I'm ready to push him back to to where he was. Let's see. I kind of want to get his eyes closer to the front of his head. Like, see how they're, I have them on the side of his head more, and they're over here, they're more on the front of his head. I'm trying to decide if I want, if I care. <laughs> so let's, let's try something. Let's see. Just want to move him forward. And then just kind of move the head forward too. Hey, what's up, Dan? David, yes, I use the gizmo line, uh, or the gizmo line, the gizmo more than the transpose line quite a bit. There, there's still, there are still a few cases where I bring the transpose line out and Usually it's when I need to bend something. Um, okay, let's let's push this back now. <laughs> I'm gonna want the camera. That's that's what. Uh, there we go. Okay, I I want to add some thickness to this collar too. Yes, cows are female. <laughs> Why? Okay, let's do extrude, polygroup all. Give this collar some thickness. Oh yeah, coming out of pose mode, that's fun to watch, huh? Okay, but I want to... Uh, flip because this is when you extrude it that way it flips the normal so I need to flip them the other way there we go now we're good okay and let's make this little let's make this little ear tag next oh man I really need my I need my pen holder I keep setting it down I'm like where did it go <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna grab the, the ear here and make sure, um, let's see, I'm trying to think of how I wanna build this thing. Maybe build it down at zero, zero, and then move it up. Oh, I keep saying him? Ah, well, whatever. <laughs> it's a cow. Her. I need to put eyelashes on her. <laughs> Don't female cows have eyelashes? Yeah, definitely female. It's what's for dinner. <laughs> oh, 
Okay. Let's see. So where is append the star? And <laughs> lipstick, put lipstick on a cow, right? <laughs> hey, welcome, Chris. Glad you could make it live. Okay. There we go. If if you have your gizmo showing when, um, and then you click on an insert multi mesh, it's going to replace whatever mesh you have with whatever insert multi mesh you chose, which is nice. And I choose a square. Okay, so this tag looks like it has a hole in it. Hold on a second. Okay. So what I'm going to do is do some uh, fancy um, live Boolean stuff, shall we? Whoop. See, it did it again. Now I messed it up. Need to go back to draw mode to add one. <laughs> Gender neutral, that's true. <laughs> Need to turn on symmetry for this one. Okay. Let's see, I think I'm going to do some Z modeler stuff with this one. So let's see, let's get rid of the bottom half of this guy. And we'll get rid of this face. Turn on double so we can see it. Uh, no, I'm just finishing it. So I didn't finish the cow before. So this is a, let's finish it. <laughs> I, I still had some things to build on it. So let's see, insert multiple edge loops. That. Oh, awesome. 2020 is fun. Okay, let's see. Edge loop complete. Just turning the creasing off of these. I don't want them creased. All right, and let's see if we can... Uh, weld these together, weld these points. Stitch two points to end point. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, now we can get rid of this crease. Ah, it's pretty much the same. I haven't really used the new features yet. So yeah, Chuck, it, it is over. I only had that going on the week of the Black Friday sale. Crease. Okay, so if I turn on dynamic smoothing, it should look pretty good. Like this, kind of looks like a tag, right? And then, um, I want to put uh, a support edge loop up there. 
Everybody needs some support edge loops. <laughs> I just want a single loop though. I need to check to see if your brush is updated 2020. I'm going to buy the workshop for my Christmas present. Awesome. Yep, it is still, so I'm, I'm going to be adjusting the pricing after the first of the year, but right now it's the same price that it always has been. It's not discounted, but it's not increased, so it's still a good time. <laughs> oh, great, awesome. I'm glad to hear that, thank you. Thank you for the endorsement. <laughs> I appreciate it. Okay, so now I want to do a live Boolean to this. And how, how we're going to do that is grab a cylinder, draw it in here. Um, oh, I was going to say, Chuck, it does work, the 2019. Um, because I, I had I didn't update anything really. It's the same user interface as what you see here. This was this this is the 2019 interface. All you need to do is put it in the proper folders and it'll work just fine. So just make sure you have a model showing. A lot of people have installed it and then they say that the menu, this menu, doesn't have anything in it. And the reason why is because it needs to have a model in, actually in the scene for those user interface items to show up so I, <laughs> I i i feel like i should um just change the numbers and update it anyway uh just so people don't go well i'm waiting for the new one it's there's not really a new one <laughs> so sorry for the confusion okay so we're going to put a hole through this tag like this but we need to have it in two different sub tools so i'm just going to split it off Okay, and then we can turn this to negative. All right, and then turn on live Boolean. Turn off wireframe, and there you go, boom. There it is, and then if we wanna make this actually a thing, I think the, the hole's too big. So that's why live Boolean is awesome, because I can shrink this down raise it up where is the new one there isn't a new one I'm saying I, I should just update the numbers <laughs> because it's the same it's the same user interface it's nothing new okay so now that I have this what I can do is go to boolean make live boolean mesh um, I I'm going to turn off dynamic subdiv. I don't have it on. I have it on here. Okay. So let's do this. Taking a moment. All right, where did it go? Oh, is the whole because the whole cow is showing. Gosh dang it! <laughs> I need. Oh, I should add the alpha section in your menu. Um, here, let me write that down. There, there are a few brushes that I want to tweak. Like, uh, for example, the snake hook brush has RGB turned on by default. I want to turn that off because I I never want to paint while I'm using snake hook. Also, um, what's another thing I wanted to do? The some of the brushes are too strong, like the pinch brush. It's set at a twenty. I want to turn it down to a fifteen. So yeah, just just certain little things, little tiny tweaks that I want to do to it. Um, but other than that, it should be the same. Okay, so this is the what's the posed version? There we go. <laughs> so I, I hit live boolean. When you hit live boolean, it's going to boolean everything that's visible. And since the cow was showing, I was, I was like, why is it taking so long? And it was because the cow was showing. Um, so, but it did the live boolean here. And I'm going to delete the cow out of it. See you later, cow. Okay, and now we have this kind of crazy. Okay. 
That's some weird edges going on there. I want to Z remesh it just to see. So basically what you're seeing is it's it got filled with a material or a, a, a poly paint as well. So it's looking worse than it actually is. Let's fill the object and there we go. Now it looks better. Okay. Um, by looking at your videos on your YouTube and stream on Twitch, I'm kind of learning how to use your brushes. Yeah, people can kind of, yeah, you can kind of figure it out. I mean, it doesn't take a rocket science or anything, or scientists or anything like that, but um, I do go over them in depth in my course. Um, but I also, go, I also talk about them a lot. After you download them, it takes you to a download page, and on that page is a, a video where I walk you through how to install them and how each, each one of them kind of works at a high level. Okay, so I'm just gonna Z remesh this really quickly. Let's go down to one, like point, point 0.1 and see what it does. <laughs> Turn on symmetry. Super low. Okay, I gotta, I gotta make some adjustments here. Like, uh, let's see. Um, let's do, Group by normals, which will do that. It'll put new groups on things that are past 90 degrees. Click on keep groups, click on detect edges. I can do crease polygroups now and say uh, keep creases. And then we'll see what it does. Oh boy, I kind of shrunk it down. It must have some extra creases in here. Let's turn off keep creases and just see what it does. <laughs> it's shrinking it kind of weird. I don't know why it's doing that. Maybe because of the target polygon count? I don't know. Okay, but at least it's keeping the circle. I can just go back and edit it. Uh, is it good to learn sculpting using front and side views for beginners because most of the time concepts does not have three side views? Uh, Pat, so I, yeah, um, I usually don't use front and side views because it can actually throw you off. Like it can give you, um, oh, polished group at zero. Let me try that. You talking about smoothing? Adaptive size, curve strength. Here, let me turn this down. Okay, that's better. Smoothing. That's right. Okay, that's why it was doing it. All right, thank you for your, for the help. Um. Okay. So yeah, it was just smoothing, smooth groups. I turned smooth groups up. I I think it was up by default, but okay. This is what I want. All that effort to get to this tag. <laughs> Actually, I want to I want to do it one more time and turn down, turn it down to point one and see what it gives me. Uh, I, think I like point two better. Yeah, that works. Okay, so um, what I was saying is I like to work off of a three quarter view because um, the front and side views will actually throw you in the wrong direction sometimes because what what happens is you're asking the concept artist to redraw what they drew and asking them to figure out like what it looks like in three in in the front and side view and so you're asking them to kind of go back inside their head and and think what they were thinking when they drew the drawing where a lot of times they get it wrong um because they're not working in 3d so and and a lot of times uh, a new model like a brand new sculptor if they're looking at front and side views and they just match those perfectly, that's that's kind of the wrong way to do it. So you'll see these brand, and they're usually in, you know, it's, they're, you, <laughs> I have to say it, they're usually in red wax. You've seen them, you know what I'm talking about. They're in red wax material and the, the lips look really crazy weird and you know, the eyes are wrong and every, the face looks flat and the sides of the head look flat. And the reason why is because 
you they were matching the front and side views perfectly and it's throwing them the wrong direction. You need to actually be looking at the three quarter view like I am here with the cow and then, you know, kind of dissecting what it should really look like. Um, can you tell me an option to just delete a part of the model? I'm talking about delete, delete hidden. Yeah, so you just hide part of the model and then go to delete hidden. So it's just right here in my custom menu, but you can find it in the uh, geometry delete hidden. So you just have to hide any, any portion of the model. And if you want to hide an entire sub tool, then you go here to delete and it will delete that piece out of the model. Okay, so, all right, now that we have this tag, took us that long to do it. Um, we can go back to our cow and append it here. This is the new one. Is that true? Yes. Okay, there's the new one. I can delete the old ones out of here. So I'm gonna delete the old uh, subtools right now. So I'm gonna click on this one, hit delete, okay. Click on this cylinder, delete, okay. And now I can turn off live Boolean because I don't need it anymore. Yeah, where's Mort when you need him, right? <laughs> Talking about the red wax. Um, okay, so now we have this, now we have this uh, tag. We can turn off symmetry and move it into place. But I want to hook it to it, uh, her ear. I said her, right? <laughs> I hook, I'm going to hook it to her ear with a ring. So let's move this up here. Let me scale it way down. And put it next to the ear in kind of a the way it's kind of sticking out here. Move forward a little bit. Okay. Um, have you sculpted, modeled something realistic? Ah, uh, no. I'm not really a. I'm not a huge fan of realism. Well, I am in real life, but I don't. Not not to sculpt. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna grab the color off of here. Fill it. Is there a way to set the ZBrush document size to a default for startup? Uh, yeah, 12 inch. What I do usually is, um, that's what I use a Z project for. So um, I offer my user interface and my brushes for free, but that also comes with a Z project file and you'll find it right here. When you, when you put it in the right place. And when you double click on this, what it does is it fills the uh, quote unquote canvas right here with, and it makes that canvas your document size. So if you want to change, and that's like the optimal document size you should have when you're working. Um, otherwise, you can go into document right here, go down to width and height, and you can set it and it will it will say hey there's going to be an error if you do this um but it's it's okay it because you just hit it but you'll have to draw your model out again and hit control n to clear the clear it off the background it's kind of a pain in the butt but anyway that's kind of how you do it and then to set it as your start starting document what i do like i said is i save it as a uh a project but you can also go into preferences config and where is it at well, I'm trying to remember it's been a long time since I've done it but somewhere underneath here there's a save startup doc I think I can't remember that it's oh it's right here save as startup doc right here okay so you can get it you can get it to where you want it and then click on this button right here and it'll save whatever settings you currently have as your startup document This is 2020, Mother Green. Yeah, 2020. Okay. So let's get a ring in here. Now, I don't have a ring in my multi insert multi mesh. So what I need to do is I'll append a star again, like this star. Then with the gizmo showing. So let's show the gizmo, return it to home. 
I go into this gear and inside this gear is a ring. Okay, it's really small. <laughs> Using a 5K screen and I always resize the document, otherwise it's way too small. So like I said, 12 inch, if you just, uh, if, you, if you maximize ZBrush into your 5K screen, okay, and then you double click on that ruler file or any project for that matter, it will size your canvas to match whatever size your user interface is set to, okay? Okay, so let's see, radius. Make it kind of a thicker ring. Um, let's see what. Maybe. Like 12, 12. Kind of hard to get there. Let's see what, because I want it to be kind of split down the center and split down the sides and have the ability to subdivide it. So now that I want that, I just go back and click on 3D Gizmo again. Yeah, no problem. Okay. And let's scale this. I don't know why it was so small. Okay. Whoop. Okay. Man, this. Sorry, my screen's jumping all over the place. <laughs> okay, I'll show you in one second. Look down at your phone for two seconds and it goes away. <laughs> okay, let's see. Now, now that I've made the ring, um, I can't go back into the perimeters and make it thicker. So what can I do to make it thicker? Well, if you hover over this center square, the scale, you can see it says scale XYZ or hold control to inflate. So if I hold down control, click and drag on this, it's just gonna move the faces along the normals. So you can, um, so you can make it thicker. Okay, now I can combine the ring with the tag so I can move them together. Merge down. Let's see, why isn't this merged down? There's nothing down below, okay. I was trying to merge the ring down into nothing. Okay, and then I can fill it with this color because we already have this color. And then I just want to move it. Where's that gizmo? There it is. Whoop, there we go. Now we have our tag. The next we'll make the bell. I'll turn on dynamic so it's nice and smooth. So it looks nice and smooth, okay. So now to, um, yeah, it still looks a little long, so. Let's mask this off. Mask it off maybe like this. And then fade that mask, grab the gizmo, snap it to the surface, and then scale it down, whoop, like that. Okay. That's how I would make it shorter. <laughs> okay, so how how would you make, so I'll, I'll just make the ring quickly. Are you off your phone? You ready? I'm gonna do it again. Here we go. So basically what I do is I append uh, any of these. It doesn't matter, I usually append a star because it's so blatantly obvious that it's not what I need, okay? So then I, I select the star right here. You make sure you, you select it, otherwise it's gonna replace whatever subtool you have selected. So make sure you s select this, the star. Then you just simply uh, open the gizmo by hitting W, E, or R, and then going to the gear right here. And then you can pick any of these primitive objects across the top, and there's the ring. Just click the ring, and it's down here. So you can zoom in, and each one of these cones is gonna do different things to it. If you hover over those cones, it tells you what it's gonna do. So see so this white one's scale, so I can scale it um, and this one is like the inner and outer radius. And this one is uh, the, the subdivisions. And if you want to twist it or not. Um, and then uh, the length divisions. 
and the coverage, and the coverage is like this. So maybe you just want a partial ring, not a full ring. So uh, UW, um, YouTube does not allow links, I believe. And I don't really have time to look at work while I'm streaming here. Okay, so apologize about that. But there you go. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'm going to delete that ring because we don't need it. So let's make a bell. A bell. I should name this cow bell. <laughs> All right, I got to think about this now. Um, so how do I make this bell? I'm probably just going to start with a cube and just start warping it around. Let's do that. I'm using a pen tab and when I draw a stroke on it, it comes out a dotted line on the screen but when I use a mouse it comes out as a stroke so um are like are you talking about when you're doing poly paint or what exactly are you trying to do okay yeah yeah I'll start I'll start with the open end and then we'll we'll go from there Okay, so again, let's do append a star. This time I want my cube. Mm, let's do this one. Okay. Using a standard brush. So there's this, see this dotted stroke right here? You can change that dotted stroke to uh, something else, but. <laughs> Would I do a baby Yoda? I don't know, too many people, everybody's modeling Yoda. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> um, my friend Corey Loftus drew an amazing one and I was really tempted to, to model that one, but we'll see. Okay. Hey, what's up, Jace? How's it going, man? Oh, thank you, buddy. Thanks so much. She, yeah, she. I got called out for that. It's not a boy. <laughs> Which is true, it's not a boy. Okay, yep. <laughs> it's still not working. Um, so I, rem I would send, so I don't work for Pixelogic personally. I just volunteer to stream on here. Um, so I would send a, I would send a support ticket to Pixelogic and ask them, maybe they have a, an idea of what, what could be causing that. I have not had that problem personally. I apologize. If I knew, I would tell you. <laughs> baby Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> I saw a really cute, uh, baby Jar, uh, what is it? Jabba the Hutt, a little baby Jabba. <laughs> that was pretty cute. Okay, so let's see. How do I want to do this? Mask this off, scale it down. And then change this square to a different poly group. Yeah, it could be your yeah your 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 pen pressure settings, I'm, and I don't I don't know what kind of tablet you have either. Okay, glad you figured it out. That's cool. Yeah, they kind of have Star Wars babies like uh, they're are they called Tsum Tsums? Those thing? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Let's extrude polygroup all. Um, let's see. Hey, what's up, Sean? How's it going, man? Yeah, afternoon. <laughs> Well, it's, it's almost one o'clock for me. 
push this up in there. Twin twin. Okay, what in the world am I doing? Huh? Let me see. I gotta go poly group. Flat island, maybe. There we go. There you go. Yeah, zoom zoom. <laughs> So my my daughter, uh, she she got one of those event calendars to count down Christmas. Oops, and she got a Sum Sum calendar. It's like it's they're pretty dang cute. Why not a cylinder? Because it's like a squarish bell. So I'll I'll make the top look like a cylinder. But for now, we're just going we're going square because it's it's got a square opening. Okay, so there we go, and then let's uh, extrude this. Uh, yeah, so cute. So I guess his wife, Alina Toddle, which is, or Alina Wooten, sorry, soon to be Loftus. <laughs> so she she put the Christmas hat on him and stuff. And she, I, they're waiting to have a baby right now, which is awesome. So Corey was drawing that as he's sitting in the hospital, I guess, or I don't know if they're at the hospital, but waiting, waiting for the baby to show up. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna do some trickery because I want to keep this square, but I want to keep, the, I want to make the top more cylindrical. So I'm gonna do insert edge loop. Multiple edge loops. Whoa, not that many. One. No. Why is it changing when I let go? There we go. Jeez. The reason I picked multiple edge loops is because um, it puts it right in the middle. There's no other way to snap it into the middle perfectly unless you use multiple, which is kind of silly, but... That's how it works. Hello, welcome to the stream. Increase all, turn on dynamic subdivisions, and hey, look at that, it's almost there. Okay, there's a few things I need to do. Let's go. Polygroup, poly loop. So I get this, I guess I could just hit extrude poly loop. I don't need a poly group to do it. Who's the concept again? Oh, it's um, it's Mitch Leaway did the cow. Thanks, Neil. So Neil just posted a, a link to that. You wanna make it its own poly group. Okay, and then I'm gonna insert edge, just one. No, not inset, insert, <laughs> there we go. Okay, and the reason I did that is because I just wanna polish or uh, soften it down a little bit. There we go. Bevel this. Now there is a, a way to um, transpose this entire thing by going to transpose, edge loop complete. Let's clear that out first. There we go. And center it. Center it, I have to turn off uh, symmetry for a moment so it centers it in, in the unmasked portion now I can use uh, Control 
and then go to this and go inflate because I just want to round this out a little bit. Actually, I don't want to inflate it. I just want to scale it. There we go. Now when I subdivide it, it just looks more like this bell. Now I can smooth the top and make it more cylindrical because I have enough sides. <laughs> 12 inch, I saw that. I saw them put VR glasses on goggles to make them feel like they're out in some field when they're actually in some cage. <laughs> That's sad. Sad, but true. <laughs> okay. Oh, really? Uh, pixel, okay. I'll have to try that. All right, um, let's see, what do I want to do? Let me, I'm going to try, I know this isn't going to work, but I want to try smoothing it. That's not too bad, I guess. But it's not becoming non-square. <laughs> okay, let me try something with a mask here. Mask circle, no clip. I want it to. Where is slice? These ones I don't use very much, but when I need them, they're there and it's nice. There we go. Clip, circle. Okay. Bam. There we go. <laughs> Boom, circle. I can drag that down. Then extrude it up. Uh no, there's not. I there not really. It's there is kind of, but you have to use it with a view with like a single vert or I don't really use it enough to to justify it. <laughs> yeah, so that's just clip circle. And basically what it does is it just jams everything into a circle that's outside the circle and puts it inside the circle, well, to the edge of the circle. So that's kind of what it does there. Okay, so poly group, flat island. There we go. Uh, yeah, because it didn't, it didn't, um, it's not rearranging the polygons, it's just squishing them. So, since it was quads before, it just displaced them, it didn't rebuild them, if that makes sense. It's not, it's not the, uh, the trim, the trim circle. So the trim circle will literally, like, rebuild the surface and most likely give you triangles. So... I'm a jewelry designer using Matrix and Rhino. I like ZBrush and just got the 2020 version. Any advice will... Okay, my advice for you, my friend, is to watch um, Tomas. So Tomas comes... He usually streams Monday nights, and he is a jewelry maker that streams here live on the Pixelogic live stream. And if you want to find out when he streams next, you can go to... Uh, just do a Google search for Pixelogic Live. Or sorry, ZBrush Live. ZBrush Live, ZBrush Live, and then click on this first link here. And if you go to presenters or schedule, okay, but let's go to presenters so you can watch his past streams. Um, let me find him. So it's it's Tomas, but it's uh, T S Whittleback. So it's this guy right here. So past broadcast and schedule. If you click on here you can go and watch all of his past live streams, which is really fantastic. He's, he's amazing. So um, that, sh that should help you out. My, myself, I don't know that much about jewelry making. Um, and then if, you, if any of you are interested in watching my past streams, you can find them all right here. So past broadcast and schedule. Here's some of my work and there you go. I have quite a few. I have, uh, what are we on now? This is, 
this is probably episode number 104 or five, something like that. I've done, I've done a few. <laughs> so anyway, 105. Thanks, Neil. Okay. Oh yes. And it, yeah, it does. Res so, um, clip curve respects masking. That's why it only rounded out that top section, this top portion, and it didn't touch the rest is because it was masked off. Maybe 106, I don't know. <laughs> okay, let's do uh, extrude poly loop. There could very well be a circuli circulize, I don't even know the word, but they, yeah, there might be a way. You've watched them all? Holy cow, that's a lot of hours. <laughs> Cause they're two hours a piece. My earliest ones were three hours a piece. That was kind of too much for me. Whoa. Okay, I need to obviously change this. So I can also do extrude flat island instead of polygroup all. I can do that. I'm still in my circular masking now. There we go. Well, it fatigues my, like I'm sitting for two hours is plenty on, like it, it really is too much. <laughs> so three hours is even worse. Okay. Let's turn. There we go. There's our, there's our bell. Good old bell. Reminds me of bell from beauty and the beast. Okay. Then I want to just scale this up. So it's straighter. No, thanks. <laughs> yeah, like I don't I don't know how some streamers do it. I mean, they're younger than me, but to sit for that long is just just way too taxing. Okay, so let's fill this with this color cuz that's what I want and then we'll put rings. Okay, let's do uh insert I'm gonna try something just for fun. I'm going to try and insert a cylinder here and then split it. Okay, cow. <laughs> I like having them on while we Model is ZBrush, great teaching tool, plus Pavlovich. Yep, Mike T. Yep, great, great. Okay, so now that I have this cylinder, um, what I was gonna try is, basically what it did is it put the gizmo where I wanted it to be. So now when I go to the gear, and I click on ring, it should put it where I want it. It's not the orientation that I want it, but at, le at least it's the location that I want it. So now I can just do the radius like this. That works. Gizmo 3D. Fill it. Yeah, it seemed to work. It's like those temporary cursors in other programs. Okay, so now I can uh, hold on control and, and drag this, which will duplicate that ring. This one's slightly larger. Then um, hold shift and it will uh, snap. Like so. And put it through. So I'm, not, I'm probably not gonna go as far as like putting a hole through this, uh, this collar here. I'm just gonna like shove it through there. <laughs> But let's merge the bell and these rings together. Now we can move them together and scale them together. So it's much larger than I have it. And then I need to put the little, the dingle ball inside. 
now now Pixelogic's gonna have to mark this video not for children because I said dingle ball. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's let's put a little let's put a dingle ball in there. Put it to one side. Whoa, turn off symmetry. There we go. Uh, which processor to buy the the largest one you can afford is my is my advice because if you're gonna be using ZBrush um, The ZBrush uses CPU more than anything more than more than RAM more than GPU So it's very very CPU intensive and it utilizes uh, as many cores as you can Find so the more cores you have on your CPU the better it's going to perform so if you can get one of those like those reason core, what are they called? I want to say core monsters, but that's not what they're called. Like all the cores. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Yep, thread rippers. Same thing. That's what I said. <laughs> yeah, core core monsters. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. I'm gonna mask this off. 12 core, 24 threads. There you go. That's all the, or one of those, those Xeons or whatever. But I have a seven, I have a reason 1700, which is, it's not a thread ripper. Doesn't rip the threads, but <laughs> it, uh, it does the job. I haven't had a problem with it. Eight, I think it has eight cores, something like that. Oh, thank you so much. Ryzen? Reason? Ryzen. I don't know. Tomato, tomato. It could be. Okay. <laughs> All right. This guy makes me laugh. Or girl. This girl cow makes me laugh. Raisin. It's the the raisin grape ripper. <laughs> I like it. Okay. I think this uh this Betsy is is done. But let me I want to pose it just a little bit. I'm trying to decide if I want to pose it. If I want to leave it. <laughs> Thanks, Jace. <laughs> All right. Save it. Cow 2. Resin Grim Reaper. <laughs> that, that it reminds me of this this old SpongeBob cartoon where there's there's like this psychotic person outside and they're they're working late at the Krusty Krab and there's some psycho outside and <laughs> They're trying to name the guy out there, like the hash bringing slasher or whatever. And SpongeBob just doesn't understand what he's saying. So he just keeps repeating <laughs> all these wrong names, like the, the Resin Grim Reaper. <laughs> Sorry, weird, weird reference. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good, good. Oh, you're right. You're right. True loop. Yep, that's why I have you guys here to remind me. Is the whole thing dynamic or just um like I think it's all this one's been subdivided just so I could paint on it, but it was it was dynamic for a while. That's kind of when I decide to take it off of dynamic and make it real subdivision levels is when I need to paint on it. So, okay, let's let's do some let's do some. Uh, <laughs> not gonna say it. Fixin'. Let's do some fixin'. There we go. So I want to smooth down. these 
like so. And then inflate them back so they're, so they're bulbous. <laughs> Fixologic. Technotronic. There we go. <laughs> bulbous. Bulbous. Okay. There you go. They're ready. <laughs> They're ready. Uh, nope. It's not a RAM eater. It's a CPU eater. A man eater. <laughs> You guys, <laughs> uh, right? Yeah, you can totally animate this. I do want to make him a little more cross-eyed because it's funny. Her, her, a time eater is true. That's a good one. Are we on the couch? Okay. Just want to put a little detail right here. Oh, gotta turn RGB off my smooth brush. Okay, so I just wanted to make him a little her. I keep saying him. It looks like a boy because it has horns. But it's not. Okay. Um let's go. And Switch color, grab this color. Go a little more cross-eyed. Because it's funny. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. Making a stylized model headpiece, can you tell me what I should do for the neck muscles? Um, well, first of all, find some reference. And second of all, uh, you can either do it with insert multi-mesh pieces individually, or you can just sculpt them in if you'd like. <laughs> What's up, Lucky? All right, uh, there we go. This cow, cow is done, as far as I'm gonna take it, okay. So I'm gonna save this cow. There we go. Then, so this, like I said, this is the finished stream. So I wanted to, uh, let's bring in another model. I can look at the punk zombie. Um, I have Mitch dog. Oh, there's one thing I wanted to do with that dog. And I, oh, it looks like I did it. Okay. This, the, the bottom of his mouth was looking strange. <laughs> so I wanted to fix it because when I was doing it before, it went, it went really narrow right here. So I just wanted to, to fix it. Now this one is all made with Sculptors Pro and you can watch watch me make this in one of the other live streams, but I just wanted to tweak it a little bit. Okay, I think I think this one's good. This lip is still a little Is that connected? No, it's not. Okay. Hey, what's up, Scorpion? How's it going? So now I'm going to get, hey, I've seen this dog before. What are you doing?
I'm trying to finish him. This is my finish stream. The finish. Not to be confused from people from Finland. <laughs> Just making this lip even across here. There we go. Okay. Dog. Okay, let's save him. There's always these things that I see uh, that I'm just like, oh, at, like after the stream is over. It's like, dang it, I should fix that. Um, <laughs> yeah, finish him. Uh, let's see. Can I download your brushes 2019 on 2020? Yes, they work. Just this, this is my 2019 user interface installed on 2020. So, yep, it works. Okay, so let's open that. Uh, kind of want to look, well, let's look at that cone squirrel. I think he's done. Yeah, he's done. I love the way he turned out. He's pretty funny. <laughs> yes, I wonder all the time. <laughs> oh, yeah, Frank. Ooh, Frank, thank you very much. You. Let's, let's borrow from the cow. Let's borrow from the cow. Thank you. Okay, we're going to borrow from the cow. Let me... Uh, let me open up that, that texture. He did have a collar. Yes. Hitch dog, here we go. Um, okay, I'll park this one in the corner. See that collar right there? Look, it's kind of like the cow's collar a little bit. Let's do it. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. Okay. Oh, and there's something, there's still a bit of this forehead that is, it's, it's too steep on this that I would love to fix. Anyway. Okay. Let's put the collar in and then we'll mess with his head a little bit and see if we can get it closer to this. Okay. Let's see. Dun, dun, dun. Let's go back to that cow. And grab this collar. So this is how you can put different pieces into different ZBrush uh, Z tools. So I have this collar selected. Now I go back to this dog and then say append. Grab the collar. You can see it in the list. Now you have to select the sub tool that you want to borrow from in the other Z tool. So I got the collar in there. I don't know where it went. Must be inside. Where are you, collar? It's probably really small or something. Where is it? Yeah, it's tiny. <laughs> it's teeny tiny in there. Okay. Okay, now let's go back to the cow, grab the bell. Not the bell. Yeah, the bell, because I want the loops, the rings out of it. Go back to the dog and do a append again. Grab the bell. And it should be just as small. How do I do the hair, the dog, the three little hairs? Um, that's just uh that's sculptress pro or uh sorry, uh snake hook brush. Just pull them out. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay, so let's go zoom in on here. Now, did the bell come in at different size? No, there it is. Okay, let's merge it down. Okay. What? 
the heck happened? Solo. Okay, that's what happened. <laughs> the that was weird. It's way too small. Oh, Anna does some nice fur. I'll have to check it out. Watch her fox thing. Okay. I just want to let's turn off symmetry. Okay, there we go. It is centered. I just want to scale this up. And what we could do, we can either scale it up by using this thing right here, which I could do, or you can go to deformation and go to, um, where is it? Size right here. Whoop, it does the same thing. <laughs> you can do it. Thanks for the support. Okay, let's go to transparency. And I don't want to stretch out the, the bell. So, let's see what we got here. Let's do auto groups. What's that? There's a fur brush that I used on a werewolf that was pretty nice. Well, honestly, the snake hook is fast and dirty too. Yep, yep, you can just use, oh, an XMD. It's almost overwhelming. If you get the XMD, like the, the brush organizer, it becomes a little bit less overwhelming, but yeah, there's a lot there that you can choose from. Okay, now the back of this, and try move elastic and move it. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, geez. Okay, hold on. I was just saying I'm, I use the snake hook brush to do the hair. Not a big deal. Okay, then. Whoop. Need mask lasso. I do want it to kind of get smaller back there, but not not like the cow was. Okay, let's get rid of the bell. We don't need the bell anymore. And this little dingle ball is gone. Delete hidden. And we can rotate this or uh, get rid of this one too, actually. Oh, no worries. <laughs> okay, so cylinder. Let's do it up here. Whoop. Okay. And I want this color to be red, not blue. And that's still a pretty good gold color, but I think it's a little off. So I'm gonna grab this one, maybe this one. There we go. It's pretty dang close. Pretty close. What? 
Why is this cert? I still have that clipping brush. No more. There we go. <laughs> like, why, why does it keep doing that? Okay, so let's see. I do want to increase the size of this ring. There we go. Then make these little pod, this little pod logo thing. For this, um, I think what I want to do is I can make those, like I kind of want it raised off the surface, so I might as well just do insert multi-mesh with a cylinder and just build it. Actually, let me reset this. And I can grab the color already. Turn off transparency. One more time, because I want it to snap to that surface. There. Okay. We have perspective turned on. That's part of the reason. And then do it again for these other little paw print things. Oh, come on. I hate it when it does that, when you can't grab the, the side. It's like flipping back and forth like this. Ah, stop it. <laughs> okay. Now, if I turn off symmetry, I can grab just this piece. Well, let me do auto groups, because I don't want them both. I just want the, the toe, just this one. And if I hold down Alt, sorry, not Alt, Control, duplicate it, but it only duplicates one. So now I can clear that out. And I obviously have something off of mirror and it's this ring so let's fix the the symmetry on this ring by moving it to the center closer okay then we can do a what's up sergi barcelona let's do a mirror and weld and see how it works uh, okay we have some some things to fix Let's grab the ring or the collar and just move it slightly over to the right. Same with this one. Slightly to the right. Here and weld. Ah. Is this backwards? What's going on? Try this side. No. Oh, local symmetry. Got to turn that off. Jeez. Get you every time. There's so many gotchas in ZBrush. It'll just get you every time. That's one of them. So mirror and weld works on local symmetry as well. So if you have that turned on, it's going to mirror it around the bounding box of the object, not the world. Okay. There we go. All right, let's edit this head a little bit. I want to clean it up. How would we clean it up? Let's grab the head, duplicate it. And then I want to Z remesh it. Let's do that. 
Um, sure. Let's try it. <laughs> it's going to take a minute. Hopefully my stream doesn't chug. I'm getting a, a smaller, uh, a sm oh, it did it. I forgot to turn off symmetry, so now it made the hairs symmetrical. Let me undo that and turn off. Well, do I care? Do I care? Do I care? I'm trying to decide if I care. So that's the only thing that's asymmetri uh, asymmetrical. I'm just going to leave it, and then I'll just pull one out farther. Okay. <laughs> so now let's check it out. That cleaned it up pretty nice. And that'll help me get rid of all the warbles. I will have to do, I'll have to repaint the poly paint. But that's okay. Uh, fill object. No, when you, when you Z remash, it gets rid of the poly paint because it essentially rebuilds the whole thing. I can project the poly paint, um, which I might, but what I'm going to do is just kind of start from here and clean this up. Yeah, I can. I can. I just don't. I'll, um, it's going to be different because um, I don't. Yeah, I don't want to the surface. So basically what I'll do here, let's just do this. Let's see if I have any extra. I do have this I don't want. Is this the new one? Okay. So basically I can hide. So thing, get rid of this. Okay. I just want these two things showing because now what I can do is I can project. Um, is it under? Uh, right there I can turn off geometry and just project the poly paint and it'll work okay but since I don't have the amount of geometry that I had before it's not going to give me all of it so I guess I could subdivide it a couple times and then project it again let's see what that looks like Ah, that's pretty good. Okay, good to go. So now we have the new geometry that subdivided with uh, poly paint. Cool. All right, and unhide everything and hide that one. Hide the ruler, and we're good. Uh, so the I think yeah I have not. So one of my students brought this up. Um, you can just project color and not geometry or just geometry and not color. So I did not know that was in there until one of my students told me about it. And I was like, oh, sweet. That's cool. So how to adjust cursor size? Um, just hit the key S. See, draw size S. You can adjust it. Okay. So now that I, the reason I did that is because I want to, well, I want to do it with the ears too. Because the ears have this um, Sculptress Pro stuff on them. And I just want to clean that up. Duplicate the ears. Z remesh. Let's go to like a three-ish. Project history. I don't think I've played with that either. Okay, that did a good job. Got rid of the poly paint, so we can do the same thing. Subdivide this a couple times. And then turn everything off. Turn the original ears back on. Turn geometry off and hit project all. Yes. Okay. And then there's the new ears with the new geometry. Oh, 
Oh, cool. Okay. Oh, project history. Okay, project undo history. That's cool. Hey, what's up, A-Cube? How's it going? <laughs> Haven't seen you for a while. <laughs> How's it going? So everybody, this is Ashley. If you don't know who Ashley is, you should. She's another streamer on the Pixelogic live streams. Amazing. So, yeah, I'm gonna get rid of these. Just lurking in the shadows. <laughs> delete. Okay, and then delete this one. And save it. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's cool. That's a, that saves a step. Okay, so now with this, what I want to do is um, I want to make some finer adjustments to polish them and bring them closer to the to the concept if I can. To do that, I'm going to go to Tipo's Mesh. I know, I didn't even say snake hook three times, Ash. What's going on? You just knew it. <laughs> okay. So basically that combines everything and allows me to make large adjustments. I think I wanna make a, the, the muzzle larger. Maybe a tad shorter, the whole thing. Oops, I still got mass by poly groups on. The ears still feel too big. The spells finally dissipated. <laughs> you can now freely roam without being summoned. <laughs> well, I'm glad you've decided to freely roam into my stream. Welcome anytime. Okay, so I wanted to mess with this, this forehead. It seems a, warbly, and B, too steep. That feels better. Maybe a thicker jowl, slightly. Oh yeah, like the connection point. It's a good call, good call. <laughs> okay, let's see, and then maybe the eye where it comes down. And then the change of direction for the cheek, bigger. Yeah, that's helping. This is too much. Trying to get this See the silhouette going down the side right there? It's a little too, too indented right there, but I want that, ch that really fast change of direction. Hello, welcome to the stream. So right here, focal shift and draw size. So if you want to change the center circle, it's O. 
If you want to change the draw size, it's S. They're both right here. But a little secret, I never change the focal size. <laughs> yeah, the, the space bar will do it too. It's right here and right there. I hardly ever change focal size. It might just be me. I don't know. Never change it. Do you change it, Ashley? You mess with focal size much? That's better. Okay. Oh, welcome to the course. That's awesome. Okay. Okay. I think that's going to work. Auto save is kicking in. All right, small adjustments. Let me just pull this ear in to connections getting lost there. Okay. I think Ashley took off. <laughs> All right, let's go back to T pose. Just the eyelids got messed up there. Okay. Let's see here. Yeah, I'm going to smooth this collar down and puff the kind of neck out around it. But okay, I'm going to use the modeler to insert a couple edge loops. Well, maybe I'll bevel it. Let's do that. Bevel. Okay. There we go. Softer. Let's grab his head and then we'll do some inflaty flate. Let's crank this up. Not that far. Not that much. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, 12 inch. Let's get. I want to even this out a little more up here. There we go. While still having that silhouette kind of roll into the collar. Oh, just today? Nice. It's <laughs> a lot. All right. I think this guy's feeling pretty much done. Yep. 
Okay, I think he's good. Let me adjust this a little bit. Oh, I want move not. Just want to make this a little bit bigger and spread these out a little more. There we go. <laughs> yeah, a little bit further skin under there. Right, and I can uh, also paint just a few little tiny little little dots. Maybe let's go just slightly darker than this. Just get them on us. Kind of slow. The response is pretty slow on this. Hmm. Don't know why it's so slow. Okay, I want to try one more little thing. One more little thing. Do I want to? I was just going to try. Maybe not. I was going to try and adjust his eyes, but I think I'm just going to leave him. I was thinking about making him a little bit smaller in there and pushing him down, but I think we're going to be good with what it is. <laughs> All right. I think what's there's got to be something going on with with 2020. I got to ask uh I got to ask Paul about it. Cuz it doesn't um it doesn't shrink down to the lower subdivision levels until like visually until I move something. And it makes it it makes for a sluggish kind of performance. See that and it kind of holds for a second when I go to rotate it, which is weird. It hasn't done that in the past, so I gotta figure, I'm just trying to figure that out. Oh, you're right. Thank you, Neil. Oh, you said that before. You said that before. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. That's why. Holy cow. <laughs> Another gotcha, right? Okay, what Neil is talking about is dynamic subdivisions and real subdivisions don't get along well together. So, um, that's why it was doing it. Oh my gosh. I'm Okay. <laughs> yep, I don't have that many polys. So basically, don't if you have real subdivision levels, they're right here, and I have three of them, and then you have dynamic turned on, that's going to slow your performance to a crawl, which that's what was happening. So I was just like, what the heck was going on? Okay. Curve this just a bit. All right. Yeah, me too. I'm going to wrap this up. So I think we're done here. It's a good stopping point. Okay, do a save as here. 
save this and if i want i i just want to do a cartoon render of him maybe shrinking that head down just a little bit give him some asymmetry here all right yep you guys you're welcome um so just so you know I give away my user interface and my brushes for free as well as a ZBrush project to start with. It comes with a ruler file to help you uh, size out your characters. You can see the ruler right here. Um, and you can get all that over at 3dcharacterworkshop.com. I also have a, uh, a course, an online course. A lot of my students are in here today. So thanks for, so much for hanging out, you guys. Um, I really appreciate it. And um, yeah, I just had a lot of fun trying to trying to fix these guys and get get them finished off. So we finished off the cow and and this guy. I'm feeling pretty good about it. So um, anyway, thanks for hanging out, and we will see you next Monday. All right. So take care and have a wonderful week and weekend, I guess. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Neil. Take care, everybody. We'll see you. Yep. Yep. Have a good one. Cheers.